What are you eating, a corn dick? <laughs> no, it's a... Welcome to World Wrestling Radio, everybody. I am your host, Nico Extra, coming at you live from Orlando, Florida. Uh, uh, my, dude. my homie's with me, Mr. Yeti. What's going on, what's buddy? Up, what's up, man? Uh, at Three Irish Boys, um, always irishwhippodcast.com, where we interview everybody you cheer for now, but only like Two years ago. Nice. And hey, yo, Vincent. Why isn't our name showing, by the way? What's going on with that? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, but I'm at, at Vincent Lospada. And uh, I got to tell you guys, right off the bat, I've seen the best match I've ever seen right now in the pandemic on SmackDown. Just now. Really? Carry on. What'd you see? Matt don't Riddle hanging. and John Morrison. Mm. What a match. What a match. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. Dude, the, the match went on, I'm telling you, went on for about 30 minutes. Bro. They rumbled. No Bro. It. Great. Bro. <laughs> dude, Bro. since day one. That was a great one. match. There's no doubt about it. He, dude, I'm telling you, every match. Listen, I think I'm more, I think I'm more sad now and depressed that we won't get to see Riddle. When we go back from the pandemic at NXT, <laughs> keep going. I'm, I mean, you know, it'd be really cool though. Honestly, I was thinking about it when I was uh, before I got on. How cool would it be if they finished the storyline with Matt Riddle and Pete Dunne on SmackDown as they win the tag team titles again and they keep going on? I think it's very possible. I could see uh, Pete making his debut any day there. I mean, he's the type of person. He's so young, but he's so talented. He could show up any day on either one of those that shows. Listen, I listen. I know we're an adult show here, but can you can you both tell me, who, just out of curiosity, who has the nicest who has the nicest ass between um, Bailey and uh, Sasha Banks? I think it's Bailey. I really I think she has such a nice. Uh, line. It's twenty twenty, man. We can't do that. I can't hear him. What did he, what did he say? I can't hear. I can't hear him. What did he say? Uh, <laughs> he's who asking has, about booties. Who's got the nicer who booty? Nice, nice, uh, Bailey or or, or Sorry, Sasha to it. You're ridiculous. Uh, isn't, that, isn't that what Bailey is known for? Yes. Yes, she is. Okay. I just. I mean, I if you're going to talk body, I, Sasha uh, Banks' body is absolutely perfect. That's I, what I mean, every woman strives to have in this world, I would think. I mean, I don't know. I'm a fat, overweight dude like you and the other two dudes on here, but I feel like that's that's a goal for people. You know what I mean? That's, a, that's I want to have a body like that. Let's let's move on, gentlemen. <laughs> let's get straight into. Uh, obviously, yesterday there were some action-packed things happening between Fighter Fest and the Great American Bash. A lot took place, no doubt about it. Let's start with Fighter Fest. Let's have some discussions. People, please leave your comments. We will answer them live during the show. In the meantime, let's go straight into it and talk about day two of Fighter Fest. What did we think about the matches in general? And let's start off with Omega versus Adam Page versus uh, Private Party, which I'm going to say right now, the Private Party has kind of wowed me. Of course, my my mother's the one who's on the line. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. What did you guys think? Uh, pr to me, I thought that was a fantastic match. Between that and uh, there's another match we're going to talk about that I think was neck and neck, but... Um, 
Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, I think I'm disappointed that I didn't get to see the, the move because it was blocked. But when Adam Page does that uh, f- double flip over the over the top and does like a, a JBL like a uh, uh, clothesline, that's amazing, dude. That oh, is absolutely. The, his, what is the name of that thing? It's a it's a beautiful move. That finisher is, is amazing. They just call that the slobber knocker. My, I got my wife and my oh, my mother oh. on the line. Hello, baby. I thought you I thought mm-hmm. she was talking to me. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I got my loyal my loyal fans. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. So so I totally agree with you. The the finisher of Adam Page, the flip over the ring to that lariat clothesline is devastating. And I don't care what anyone says. I enjoy Omega and Page having what the the little battle thing they have going on. And that's undoubtedly going to lead to a nice little duel between them themselves. But private party has really stepped up. They are some high flyers. They have some moves I've never seen before. I saw that dude yesterday jump over the top rope onto the second rope and do a flip. I've never seen that in my entire life. And I've been watching wrestling for a really long time. So um, what's the potential as far as private party goes and, and how far does this Kenny Omega Adam page team ship really rivalry go on? Cause they have a, beef within the the friendship let's agree to that right i'm gonna tell you what i am very surprised and i'm just scratching my head i'm very surprised they won last night i really thought there was a a a slight second that private party was going to take titles off of them i really was you thought private party was having their moment can you can can you take uh in in this pandemic, in the way that it is with pro wrestling, the way that it is, can you risk taking belts off of somebody like Omega and Page and putting it on um, Private Party because that's viewership, right? Maybe not very many people know. Sorry, like not mo- most people will not be f- familiar with Private Party unless they are absolute pro wrestling fans that want an alternative to WWE because let's face it, there hasn't been competition for so long that you have the WWE universe. So this is just zombies walking towards whatever's presented towards them. So in all reality, like don't belts now equal ratings and you have to be really cognizant and careful of who you place those belts on, especially with everything else that's going on. Like it's, you don't know what's maybe brewing or at the top, and it's not. I don't know if it's worth taking the risk to put it, uh, you know, to switch anything up. I'm not saying anything negative or derogatory towards anybody. I'm just, you know, it's. I don't know. Is it ratings? What is it? I mean, is I. It's a big move. It's I don't know. Omega is always titles at this point in time because you're absolutely right. Ratings are everything right now, and I don't care what anyone says. Uh, the Monday night war, or I'm sorry, the Wednesday night wars are very real, and they're taking place, and this is. Two or three weeks in a row that NXT has won, and I don't care what anyone says. AEW is concerned about that. They're taking shots. They're they're looking at the ratings. There's no way in hell Cody Rhodes did not look at 3 p.m. on the page that has the ratings to see what they got. And the same you know, applies with Triple H. His ass is looking too. Let's be honest. I mean, let's let's be real. Like MJF. Like I mean, did you hear? I mean, it's just a, a call out. Like, it, like he said, we're in a ratings war, right? Like that. that those were his comments. I, I, I mean, didn't it's, see it's the across the bow. I didn't see the MJF. What, did he? Did he talk crap? Um, he always talks crap. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it's you know, I mean, he he called that he called it out a ratings war, and it's 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 kids like him that are going to make the difference because. I'm, He's heel 100% all day, all the time. Like, that's not a, that's not a gimmick. That's that's not kayfabe. That's, He's that's Maxwell Jacob Friedman from day I'm one. Gonna, I'm going to tell He's you this. <laughs> but if you go, yeah, then you go home and go, man, I'm really good at this, you know? Listen, I've seen – listen, there's two guys in this business. No, that I, no. I, huh? <laughs> okay, being, uh, there's two guys in this sidebar. business that are, I think, are really good on the mic. Um, I've seen – uh, MJF in person in Orlando at, at MLW before he signed with uh, AW. And I got to tell you, when he came out and he did his spleel and then he started picking fans out of the crowd and pick on them, I'm telling you, that was money. That was money. And um, Joey, uh, not, yeah, Joey Ryan with the whole, um, you know, how he's so vulgar. Um, was vulgar. Why, 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 why
He's unemployed. No, dude. I think he's a piece of no, shit. He's screwed. I, I, I never said he wasn't a piece of shit. I'm just saying though. Let's he take some commercial. Or I'm sorry. Let's take some questions. Elvis saying thoughts on the U.S. belt. What would you guys think of the U.S. belt? The new debut of the U.S. belt. Um, obviously a different design than usual. I believe it's laser printed for the first time ever. And laser printed. And yeah, laser printed is going to be hard to be duplicated. Like, um, like I get on maybe ten emails a day on Facebook of people. So oh, here we go. That's what's up, man. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. I, I actually, you know, it took me a couple. It took me a couple days to really um, look at it and figure it out. But I, I actually do like the look of it. I like the burn on the front. Um, it's a little different than the other U.S. titles uh, from the previous past. Um, I'm kind of digging it. Yes, this is real, Eric. What's up? Thanks for joining. Old friend from the Keys. Daniel, thanks for joining. Elvis, thanks for joining. We love you guys. I think the belt's beautiful. What did you think, Yeti? Uh, I really, you know, when, when you look at this thing, uh, I... Oh, there's Chris Harris. Right? There it is. Like, look at this thing. Look at that thing. It's yeah. beautiful. Right? I think it's great. I think the design is great. I mean, with the with the flag in the back. I just need it right there. No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't do the U.S. title. Have you guys seen the? Uh, have you guys seen the pictures or memes going around with like uh, Team America in front of it, like explosions and shit? Have you guys seen those yet? <laughs> it it kind of does look like Team America. <laughs> America. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'll tell right? you what it looks like right? when I buy it. Uh, when I buy it next week, I'll tell let you know. Oh, uh, are you okay, getting? Like, what do you mean by laser printed? Right. You're such. Uh, oh. Yeah, for the first time. Uh, so I have a lot of weirdos that follow me on Facebook. Love you guys. Thanks oh. for joining me. Um, okay, Nico, uh, this is ironic, man. Like this is this is kind of stuff. Like when you put it up there, because you know, like I, I didn't even look at this. I didn't read it. Like all I saw was FTW, and I go, yeah. well, okay. So I haven't, honestly, haven't watched Fighter Fest Part Two. Uh, so I'm guessing that the orange belt is back. It is the original FTW belt uh, was unveiled by Taz last night. Can I just night. say? Can I just say I was right again? Can I just say I was right again? But were you please? excited about it when he pulled that crap out? I mean, what guys? I can't be the only person who was like, "What is he doing? Don't tell me it's the FTW belt." No, he, and then he pulled it out, and I was like, "This dude." Do you he's know the, he's, he's in the Do you know the history no. behind the FTW belt? Dude, I don't give a shit about what happened in 1993 <laughs> at the freaking Hammerstein ECW ballroom arena. between RVD and fucking Sabu. I'm sorry. Hey, you know what? I really thought I it was care. You know, I really thought it was Taz, and this might sound stupid. You might guess might laugh at me. I honestly thought because I kept hearing rumors about uh, Adam Cole leaving. After that, after that, because of his contract, I really thought it was like somebody big, like Adam Cole, because they said it was gonna, sh it was gonna shock the wrestling world. I'm like, well, that belt really didn't shock the wrestling world. It's coming, somebody coming from WWE to NA AEW would shock the wrestling world. That was hardly a shock. If under, if anything, it's not working for me, and I can sound like a dick all I want, so but I'm I, not enjoying. You guys, do you guys do the? This. I'm not enjoying Mox, uh, the cage sitting behind. While Taz cuts a cheesy promo about who better, I'm Canyon. That's who better. I mean, stop stealing people's lines. Stop. You're bringing back ninety. I mean, I know Tony Khan loved DCW, and this goes <laughs> this is deep. There's a whole thing to it, but it just is not working for me. And to make give if Cage gets this belt and walks in with it around his waist like a total badass, and jobs to Moxley. Because that's probably what's going to happen. That seems to be the repertoire for brand new guys that come in there. They get the main event shift and they lose. And then the next thing you know, they're fighting Dark Order. Um, what, <laughs> what, what is the meaning of the title? What's the point of it? Uh, um, one, one you have it, 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 Cage needs Cage needs the title like Taz needed the title to get over, right? Yeah, but here's my you question: couldn't, Why? Why um, is he not that good? Yeah. He does Taz? something. No. Taz, no, hey. Brian Cage. Is he, why does he have to have a title? And when it comes to not cutting promos, yeah, he's not that good. Well, he's like Brock Lesnar. Brian Cage. And there you go. This yes. is what we yes. all go back to. Yes. This is the bootleg. This is the Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman, you order from Wish. This shit got me 2,000 <laughs> likes on Twitter. And Taz himself commented on it. He retweeted it and said, the facts are we're different people, yada, yada, yada. I, 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 I hate hearing Taz's voice. I hate it. 
I hate seeing him on TV. I hate seeing him Guys, on you know what? TNA. He's a cheese. He ball. is one of my Christmas. No, he is he is one of my favorite favorite ECW talents. Just because um one uh the heart and soul that he put into every match that he was in. Uh and two, like he followed Heyman to the end. Like he was if people want to talk about like punk and uh Heyman guys, like you you can't tell me Taz isn't a Heyman guy through and through from day one. Oh, absolutely. So um, I mean, look, even with Heyman gone and Evolve was his second baby. That was his second baby. That was he. I mean, if you don't remember the Evolve special on WWE.com, go watch it because that, it was Heyman's goodbye. He wasn't going to be there anymore. He was going to go ahead and pass the reins to, you know, whoever he needed to pass the reins to. And this is where we're at. Like, I don't know, man. It's. Nico's going to do some good stuff. Real quick, uh, but, Yeti, I gotta ask you. I, something. I don't know what the the. What do you what do you? Uh, I know it's off topic, but it, but I saw the commercial. What do you think about WWE giving the free version of of WWE doc, or, of, of the network? Do you think that's a, a move for just because of the pandemic, or do you think they actually are doing that because people can't afford ten dollars a month? It's a move. It's a bold move, and I like it. Bold. I think. Did they also take it away, though? I think it was only for one month. No, it's still going month. on. It's still going on. It's a bold move, and I think it's a smart move yeah. because there's a lot of people that, quite frankly, can't afford $10 and but want to watch wrestling, and this is their opportunity to go see WrestleMania three, Hulk Hogan versus Andre Giant, and it will spark people to enroll in it. Plus, when they go to punch the numbers in, it's going to say that, that uh, they were able to have X amount of people involved in it you know what i mean they're able to say oh x amount of people were involved in the um as far as viewing the stuff on the wwe network and also as far as viewership so i think it's a great opportunity for them honestly i gotta tell you something real quick i don't want to sound like a dickhead but uh everybody knows i'm a real dickhead i've had WWE network since they first launched and i gotta say it's not for everybody and i don't feel bad for people that can't afford it because honestly 10 bucks a month for all that content is a freaking steal. A steal. Sure. And you get the pay per view. That's oh, where it's the deal. Because I did used to pay thirty bucks like a loser. Oh, dude, I used to pay sixty bucks when it when it's on pay per view with, with my buddies. We would all chip in. It Copy. was uh, th- it was a time where uh, uh, my first wife worked for a communications company. And we would get pay-per-views for half off. So, like the WWE pay-per-view that was, you know, thirty nine ninety five was twenty bucks for me, and then every weekly TNA pay-per-view was only five bucks. I'm like, sweet, you know, WCW pay-per-view was twenty dollars. So I'm like, seventy dollars a month opposed to, I mean, it's half off, dude. So I was lucky enough to watch all that stuff. I mean, th- those are the, those are like what when you ask the question, is it a bold move? Yes, but no, because eventually it's going to have to happen. There's competition out there. You have to start to gain the viewership um, at a different level and a younger level. You have to capture that audience younger. I mean, Timber's kids are are young. There's two and eight, and they love it. Like they've got their own little ring, they got their own their little toys, and you know they they go to town. It's I, I think it's for people that are my age and and. I don't know. Uh, kids with parents like us are going to watch the WWE network during a pandemic. It's going to happen. It's, it's a bold. Hey, let's watch every WrestleMania. It's a bold. Hey, let's, you know, we got a month. Let's watch every Royal Rumble. You know, I think it's, a, I think it's a cool move. Um, I think they're looking to gain that market and viewership. So if there is competition playing the mm-hmm. long game, which is dev- what WWE does, since the WWWF is play the long game, but here's my here's the my collector. Yeah. Give everybody a sixty. Give everybody a sixty thousand dollar guaranteed. Uh, Sarah, for a year, for two years and see what happens. At. What do you guys think about so that? That's why they're hot on Tessa. Uh, 
I think this is going to be uh, NXT or WWE or oh, dude. If, if Tessa Blanchard doesn't go to NXT, that's a shame. That is a real shame because she was great in the when she was uh, at the uh, what's that thing? It was just uh, the the May Young Classic. She was fantastic. May Young Classic. I'm surprised they didn't sign her. I really, I really am. Nice. So the main event of last night, Orange Cassidy, freshly squeezed in Jericho. Jericho said it was the best match he's ever had in his entire life. Oh Obviously, he did that for ratings. But um, what did you think of the match? Did you get to see it? Did you did you even watch it, Josh? <laughs> you said you watched it. Today. How do I? So the people that listen to the Irish Red Podcast will understand how this question is difficult for me to answer because of my affinity for Orange Cassidy, um, what he means to pro wrestling for me personally, um, where he's trained, where he came from, um, where his roots he's not are rooted. To be there. It, not. Like, yeah, if you yeah, ask yeah. me, if you ask me, like, who are, what are some of the coolest stories of people that you know in, in what they call the business? Like... Drew Gulak is probably number one. Um, probably two would be Anthony Green, and that dude number three, absolutely, hundred percent. What about the Miz? See, I mean, of, you put the Miz in there because did anybody really think the Miz was going to be as hot as he was back when he was in on MTV, the Real World? Dude, here's how. Again, here's he how you go back over, to market share. Extended his accomplishments. Let's be honest. Huh? You, you he definitely uh, um, went farther than he was supposed to go. No doubt no, about it. No, definitely. Think about this, though. Think of, no, okay, have you guys sat down? Nico, I'm going to ask you this question yes. for your lovely wife. Mm-hmm. Have you sat down on the free version of the WWE Network and watched The Miz and Mrs.? No, I have USA Network, but I don't watch the Miz and Mrs. I don't like the Miz. You guys, I don't. I'm not a fan. Unlike all you guys, you guys love him. I don't like that dude. You know, you know why? It's because you see something in him that reminds you of you, and you just don't like it. I'm like a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're like the okay. So, so Taz is gonna hit me back and say, "I'm the, I'm the wish, uh, Ms. and Maurice." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, real awesome. quick, real quick about the Miz. I gotta tell you what. Out of everybody I've met in the whole entire genre of wrestling, even the the legends, I think the Miz is the nicest and the most humble person to his fans out of anybody like that man literally stood and stood when I was at the world rumble when he was here in Orlando two hours outside signing bullshitting talking to his fans like he legitly loves his fans and that's a I mean that's to me that's that's a good, that's a good guy I mean that's Thank a good you. guy totally a good guy I mean, one of the best. So, who is the Shout longest out, out review? Yep, I like wrestling. What's up, guys? Thanks for joining. Reigning intercontinental champion ever. Ooh, I want to say that's HBK, but I'm probably wrong, and it's probably the Miz. Let's be I honest. It was the Miz. That's, Let's see. That's my question. Let's see. That's my question. So, when you say Miz has zero talent. Where do you guys rank the Intercontinental Championship belt? Belts? Chart. That's a great, great definition for this dude. I just, what? he just never did it for me. And even when he had his moment in the sun as the main event at WrestleMania, he was an afterthought to the John Cena rock match. He's just been at the right place at the right time. Uh, I'm really happy for him. How can you hate on him at this point? He's got his own show besides um, WWE, Miz and Maurice, and he's doing, um, He's doing another show. I saw yes. he's doing some kind of like wipeout style show. So yeah. it premieres tonight. Yeah. I mean, the dude's on fire. What can you do? You have to give him his props. I can't really hate on him too hard. All right. You, you guys ready for this? I got the facts. You guys ready? Yes. Ooh, yes. We're, we're all wrong. We're all wrong. Who is it? Who do you think holds the most times as the Intercontinental Champion? I don't care about that. I want to know longest days raining. Man, I can't wait to meet The Rock. When I see The Rock one day, that I'm going to mark out. I don't ever mark out for anyone because I see everyone at NXT and WWE. But when I, I see The Rock, good. dude. Who, who's the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion? At 454 this days. Definitely winning. Yeah. 454 days. You both are going to shit when you hear this. 
the honky talk man. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. The warrior, the warrior dethroned him in five seconds. That's right. So here, here's part of that. So that we're t- trivia. I don't know if you guys talk mania does trivia mania. So I think Nico, like JP's going to do that. Rucker like wins every freaking time. He I think Vince is really good at it, and our boy executive time. consultant really shocked me last night. We are having some crazy um, numbers. So let's ask Yeti what we were asking last night, Vince. Let's see if he knows. Ask the question, and I want to know since Rucker is watching. I want to ask the question. Well, we'll, ask Rucker, the we'll ask everyone, and don't Google. Okay, so. so I didn't know this. Did the Rockers ever win a tag team title? Are you talking like – all over the WWE. world. WWE. WWE. No. Okay. That's a yes or no answer because they did win against the Heart Foundation on a non televised event. They won. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Don't laugh. Wikipedia has them as one time champs. They won the belts and then for some odd reason they never aired the match and they gave the belts back to the Heart Foundation. For I don't I don't make no sense to me. Like why would you why would you like like why would you film something in front of an audience? They win the belts and then all of a sudden they're okay, you guys, you won them fair and square at one, two, three in the middle, but we're taking them away from you. The nineties were a weird time, you know, and they didn't really have any rhyme or reason to anything they did. They were just like, Hey, rockers are winning tonight, dropping a Saturday. That's just how Vince thought whatever went on in Vince's crazy little mind was uh pretty much gospel and still is Minneap- Minneapolis and Hulk Hogan. Dude, I tell you what, it blows my mind. I would listen, this is how crazy this blows my mind. I was walking my dogs this morning down the street in our neighborhood. For some odd reason, I'm sitting there going, how freaking crazy is it that two of the most iconic wrestlers, well, one more iconic than the other, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty never held the tag team titles. That blows my mind how good they were, and they never got a shot. Like, those guys were gold in the 80s. But they didn't need – I guess that's – what's your definition? What what, what is your definition of an individual or team – that needs some, some Nana has a pick somewhere of that that took place at the, at the Armageddon Center, you know, with their kids. Name what listen, na- okay, Yeti, name one tag team right now in NXT. They did win, Rucker. Go look at uh, Wikipedia, they're one time champions. It's on there, Yeti. Name one team, Wikipedia, in NXT that should have won the belts that didn't get a chance. That were cold on the mic. You are three seconds away. And the rock means three seconds away. Hey, I'll say go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. We're done. Nate, can you guys name one tag team that you think in NXT that could have that should have been champion? Champs. This is a really good point that he's making. Sting did win the world title from Vader overseas, lost it days later. They came back and they never showed it. I've lost you both. I've lost you both. I'm, I'm telling you guys. Do I have to tell you the answer? Tell me. Big Cass and Enzo should have won the belts. Should have been NXT champions. By far, should have been champions. And I'll tell you, the only reason why they weren't champions was because the Hardy Boys came back and they won. If the Hardy Boys never came back, they would have won that mania. They would have won. Yeah, but who cares? I care. They were great. <laughs> I mean, they were great. Little shorty Enzo could cut a promo, and Kaz was decent. Yeah. Kaz had that was, yeah, that was two years ago. Dude, Enzo Boring is probably the best talker on the mic. Best he talker. Some, yeah, but how is he now? So, talking? see what I mean? Like, 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 like these questions. Like when Rucker's popping this stuff off, and there's some there's some talent in there. So, like, I don't know. I can't. I don't. I watch wrestling and then I forget about it. I think it needs to be televised. We need to be doing it live and, and really oh, getting yeah. to the best. Oh, I can fit. Hold on. What's the other question last night? Did the Bushwhackers ever win a title? WWE t- champions. In Australia. But they never televised it. No, WWF. No, WWF. Oh. They did not win. Uh, no. Another. I another so. should have had the belts. Dudley boys. Yeah. All right, we're we're getting away here. We're we're veering away. Yeah, Let's get sorry. back in here. Let's get back on track. Keith Lee versus Adam Cole, winner take all match of the night, in my opinion. Uh, as far as NXT went, I hold probably, on. You never asked me about Orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho. You want to go back to that real quick? Here yeah, go, bro. What do you I, think of Orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho? I honestly, honestly, I think 
for Jerry. Don't wear them, Freddy. No, I don't. You know what? Hold on. Well, let me tell you something, brother. Listen, I think it's a, I think it's a shame that Chris Jericho said that that was his best match. A shame. I mean, Arch Cassidy isn't that great of a wrestler. Jericho's a salesman at this point, though. That was a sales pitch. Tune Thank in you. tonight. It's the best match I've ever had in my life. He's going to say that five more times this month. Happy Happy Canada Day. <laughs> I'll tell you this right now. I'll tell you this right now. I, did, I wasn't a fan of the match, but I'm going to tell you what. I wasn't a fan of the of the Adam Cole and Keith Lee because I knew the ending of it. So how was the Orange Cassidy Chris Jericho match, Vince? I, I thought it was shitty. I also <laughs> did not think it was a very great match, and I for him to say it was one of his best matches was silly. They're, Orange Cassidy has unlimited potential, and he's going to be a great star, but he doesn't need Chris Jericho to put him over. I mean, I compare that to Fandango when he went at WrestleMania 36. Fandango. Oh, I'm sorry. Thir- was it 34? When, no, was it? Was it? No. Was it 34? Wait, hey, who'd you just compare to Fandango? Orange Cassidy. Oh. You fucking crazy man. You no, I'm not fucking crazy. crazy. You realize that? You should be medicated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the, the the main event, in my opinion, of the night. Keith Lee versus Adam Cole. Keith Lee is the new NXT World Champion. Keith Lee is the North American Champion. Keith Lee beat Adam Cole clean in the ring without Undisputed making any appearances or, or cheating at all. And unofficially, Adam Cole gave Keith Lee a hug at the end and took his little picture with Triple H. And uh, yeah, we'll leave that for what it is. What did you guys think of the match? And what did you think of the outcome? Yeti. I, yes, all day long. So what we said, right, is that Keith Lee needed to go over huge. He needed to win clean. And if Adam Cole was going, <laughs> was get, <laughs> if Adam Cole was going to move up, which it looks like he probably is, this is a ratings yeah, war, right? Like it. we're, we're looking for, for ratings, right? This is, this is what we're doing. So I, dude, 100%, I'm a, I'm a Keith Lee Mark. Do I, I have like, a? This guy just asked me that. Are you serious? Oh hell yeah! Oh, I got one. Hold on, I got one too. Hold on. Do I have an Austin. Come on. Oh, man. Because Stone Cold sets up. Yeah, we got Austin. Man. We got anything you guys want. All right, listen, I, listen. I'm gonna tell you right now. My top two matches of, of the week between uh, Fighter Fest and Great American Bash. You ready? Yeah. The butcher, and, the butcher and the blade, of MGF, taking on Beyond uh, Wrestling. Beyond wrestling, but you're Wardlow, in the void. Allie, uh, Allie's husband, Young Bucks and FTR. Oh God, that was by far the second one, and the first one we already talked about: Kenny Omega and Adam Page versus the Private Party were the, to me, best two matches of, of the night. Vince, I can't help but notice that you shit on NXT, oh, yeah. yet you go to NXT every week. What's going on with that? You really you think AEW is that much better than NXT? Because I don't agree with you. I think this. I think the appearance of AEW looks better at the Daily Place or whatever, but the matches themselves are not superior in any way, shape, or form. I'm, listen, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you the ratings why. are proving that, by the way. NXT is three weeks in a row. Yeah, you know what though? You know, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why they're the ratings. I don't proving. have an Iconics one. Do you? I'll have one next week, Elvis. I promise. Iconic. I can oh, get, I can get one right quick, quick though. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna t- listen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why I shit all over uh, uh, NXT. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Listen. <laughs> listen uh, gonna, so we have a lot of fun you. with our sound effects. Go ahead. I'm gonna just tell you. I, I um, I think because the fact that I hate how NXT gets rid of their wrestlers so quick. I hate it. That's the biggest thing for me. It's like, okay, we go to NXT every week. You know. And then it's like within sometimes even three months they get rid of it, and it's like I, I feel like now with the pandemic, we're we're losing out on seeing some of the wrestlers we really enjoyed, and when we come back there's gonna be nobody who, Keith Lee, and who's the other dude with uh uh, see he sucks. you, you are unimpressed by Keith Lee. You're, no, no, you're... no, 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 no. I'm, I'm unimpressed. I'm not unimpressed. I just don't think he's as good as everybody thinks he is. I think he's a fat guy that can that can move stuff up up rope. Yeah, of course, dude. He's amazing. Okay, uh, he, okay. Here's the thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right now because you're just talking no, crazy. No, Kofi Kingston's amazing. Okay? The moment I saw Keith Lee walk into a room 
and he looked at me. He just looked at the side and gave a smirk. I said, that dude's going to be a superstar. He got in the ring. He did some crazy shit, including a, I don't even know what it's called, the backflip something. It's like a luchador move. He's done it with Dijakovic like five times. The dude is unbelievable. The dude can cut promos. That He has the look. He's not some fat dude that can, what, are you insane? The Keith Lee is going to be a WWE world champion soon. Like within 365 days, in my opinion. He should be if he's not. But we'll see. It's, we got a, we're halfway in. We should probably take a break real quick. And I, th- I think JP wants in on the conversation. And by Send him an invite. Let's get his ass in here. I just, I did it on, the, on his Twitter. So maybe if we take a break real quick, I can. All right. We're going to take a break. He, 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 play our he, is, he is a Southie kid. And we'll be back. Um, send the promo. Yeah, send it out. the bottom line. Because Stone Cold sets them. Halfway down, we'll be back in a second. back and there's no chance in hell that you left hopefully you like that you like the cheap play in there oh man we're you know, having a good time we're enjoying the show thank you so much everyone for being a part of it uh you truly do make the show better with your interactions we love the comments it makes the the hour go by like a breeze and really makes the entire experience enjoyable there's a little beef going on here i like this denise kind of telling him to s I stay off up right here. Let me tell you this: on the break, I had a, I had a chance. Oh. <laughs> I had a chance to think about what you said about about Keith Lee. I got to tell you this. Let's hear it. When I first saw Keith Lee at a, a NXT live in Sanford, Florida, he walked in the room. I got to meet him, and I walked up to him and go, "This guy will be a star in NXT, but when he goes to the main roster, Big Man's gonna shit all over him." He's going to shit all over him because McMahon doesn't make good decisions. He makes horrible decisions. He does. He, he, you, you cannot say he makes good decisions. You cannot, he, you cannot say that. He makes bad decisions on NXT wrestlers every single time. And that's not true. And we're going to add one, JP one from the Irish Whip to us. JP, are you ready to go? He's giving us the no signal. We're bringing you in anyways. You're here. How you doing, buddy? Welcome. Thanks for joining us. What's going on? <laughs> It's got that face. I don't think he can talk. What's up? He's orange. Ca- he's being orange Cassidy. He's gonna give us. So the- far. Hey, it's this. This is a radio show it. too. Don't forget, we can't have dead air, bro. I get it. I got Cassidy it. Appearing. So far, I've heard Orange Cassidy's not a good wrestler. I'm all right, man. I'm just listening in awe. So Keith Lee is a fat guy that can do flips, and Orange Cassidy can't wrestle. That's what I get out of this episode so far. You forgot also Young Bucks suck, and Taz is a clown. I agree with that. FPW belt's a joke. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You think that you think Orange Cassidy has more talent than the Young Bucks? I don't like the Young Bucks, and yeah, they're uh, they're fantastic. What are you talking about? They're they're just as good, if not better, than the Hardy Boys. No. Oh my god. Oh my god. Eh. Okay. So why? But here's the thing. <laughs> Young bucks. The hell? What in the hell? All right, let's get back to the show. <laughs> I don't know what so we're, my, no, we're getting sidetracked here all of a sudden. Go ahead. Oh shit! Get your point across, my friend. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> this is, what? This is, 
This what Hardy Boys did you watch? When did you start, did you start watching see, the Hardy Boys in like 2013? Windows. They're all porn no, windows. I started, I started watching the Hardy Boys when they were in uh, the Attitude Era, but I'm going to tell you this. The, the Hardy Boys, when they, they, they came to WrestleMania 35, they were good, but they weren't that good. And when they wrestled the Young Bucks the night before in Lakeland, Florida at Ring, Ring of Honor, that match right there was by far one of the best matches of WrestleMania weekend was them and two. You, and you think that's more because the Young Bucks were in the match than Matt and Jeff? I I think both of them. I think they both have great talent. I'm I'll not, give you that. But they, the Hardy Boys without the Hardy Boys, there's no Young Bucks. Period. Okay. You're right. You're right. I'll give you that. You're right. If there was no Hardy Boys, you're there's no Young JP from New York. You're right. You're right. That's true. That's a good statement. I, See, I, I bring fucking fans. I don't know who that is, but what's up? I think she thinks you're JD from New York. Oh, no, 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 no. I am not that fucking. <laughs> oh, God. All right. All right. No, let's, so let's not get sidetracked. Gonna, we, I got, just we got some show to kick, talk super about. Kick, though. Super kick, super kick, super kick, roll up for the win. And that's what the Young Bucks came up on, and that just saw with them for me forever pretty much. But Super kick um, party. It's my business, man. Give them that. Oh yeah, no one can ever take away what they have going on as far as businessmen. They've they've climbed the top of the ladder. Them, Cody and Kenny Omega and probably Jericho have have really reached a pinnacle that few will ever see, and that's a chunk of the change yes. of the winnings of the actual yes. show itself, and and have real life investment in the show doing well on ratings and also doing well um, as a show itself. So. Uh, I see that they're invested, and and I hate to hate on them. They just don't do it for me, and that's okay. You don't have to like exactly. every single wrestler. I got to tell you this, though. Matt Hardy has, I tell you this, out of all the wrestlers in the last 10 years, Matt Hardy by far has created the character that nobody can ever touch, and that's Broken Matt Hardy. That and When he was in TNA with that character, it was gold. And when he went to WWE with it, it was horrible. Let's see how many manias have we been to? I've been personally been to WrestleMania 24, <laughs> WrestleMania 28, WrestleMania 33, <laughs> WrestleMania 35, and I would have been at WrestleMania 36, but so yeah, four. This, I've been to this four. would have been number 36 would have been two for me. I was at 25 in Houston, and I was going down to Tampa. So okay, so I've done all of yours, Nico, but I went to New Orleans. Yeah, so, I almost went to New Orleans. So New I've Orleans, done, okay. so all the ones you've been to. What was your favorite one? 28. Yeah, me too. Rock and John Cena was very special, dude. And was, Triple that H. Was, that was the best match I've seen in a lot. When The Rock came out in Miami, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Dude, you yeah. know, yeah, can, I, can, I tell you the, can I tell you the match that I thought was the funniest, but by far would be the most memorable because it was so short? Was Brian. And Daniel Bryan, yeah. To me, I was like, I sat down with my beer, ate one chip, and I go, Holy shit, the match is already over. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you yeah. joking? Was that when he was having the head issues? No, no, no. That was, yeah, when, was, that? That was when he I was. Think it was. Was it not the concussion time for it him? Was his, it was his manager at the time. It was a girl. It was one of the girls. It was either Bella or, or AJ, right? One Damn, Denise. AJ Lee. AJ Lee, that's who it was. Yeah, it was one of them. And he gave well, her. I, I was supposed to go to WrestleMania 2000. And I was going to say, would this 36 would have been your first, right, Josh? Yeah, because uh, 2000 would have been my first one, but my grandfather died like three days before That's not good. we were supposed to go down. So, like, I tried to sell my tickets, uh, but it was, you know, I mean, eBay was, I don't know, still kind of young at that point in time, right? So you could try and sell it. The problem was getting them down there before you could just transfer e-tickets on Ticketmaster. Right. I mean, I can yeah, yeah, so, so, Wow. Yeah, Seven I watch it. I can see this. I can see those three seats. That's amazing. And fuck you guys yeah, down in Florida. Florida. Every week. You're awesome. <laughs> Why fuck us? Y'all you you just stole fucking SummerSlam from me. Oh, like Is we're going to. It's not what? how. Oh, what? We get it at the performance center? That's not. Yeah. We didn't steal anything. We don't get it. Hey, hey. No. What? They're not going to let Coronaville have that down there in Florida. They can't. Hey. That's, they got the Rona down there big time. You know what we get to do for that one? Nice. We get to go ride by the performance center and watch all the wrestlers look at it. It's like, holy shit, what are these guys doing? They're going to give us Corona. So I, I live fairly close to the performance center. I live maybe 10 minutes away from it, and I happen to have a friend in that area. I was over there, and I 
had gone to the Circle K there, and someone was just, I overheard them saying that the Undertaker was at the 7 Eleven or the Circle K right like 10 minutes before me. They're like, dude, that was the Undertaker. I'm so sure. I was like, God damn it. Why do I come 10 minutes late to see? I, I mean, <laughs> I. Well, who did I tell yeah, you? Yeah, they could be showing up anytime there in Orlando. Who did I tell you I That's saw? The set. Who did I tell you I saw at the uh, right, Sprouts? The, the ex Intercontinental Champion. Uh, what's his name? Honky Talk Man? No, 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 no. The, the number the number he was the champion, they took the belt away because he, he didn't want to come wrestle because of the corona. Oh, Sami Zayn. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. I was walking around yeah. getting getting um meds and Sami Zayn was there with the intercontinental title just hanging out i'm like what the fuck nice oh, oh she was there with owen holy shit, oh, shit. she's that a must, legend you're an instant legend been, just from being there wow. that must have been a sight that's horrible <sighs> must have been uh, a sight <laughs> <laughs> well i'm gonna say it's oh, i wouldn't want to be yeah, that was a sight all right <laughs> it wasn't intentional but yes you know they literally <laughs> say hey, he yelled a- he yelled look up below they say really like the last thing he did was down. literally looking out for everyone else. What's up, broadcast podcast? I tell you what. Well, after watching that Dark Side of the Moon, I say it, it wasn't a good Dark episode. Of the ring. <laughs> you like like Led Zeppelin, huh? You three. Oh God. Awesome. See, Rucker said that wasn't Sami Zayn. That was Ed Sheeran. It could have been. It could have been <laughs> Ed Sheeran. He was like, "Hello, mate." I won't. It happened, dude. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> I want El Generico back. Oh yeah! Imagine yeah, El Generico I, in I, NXT. I, I think El Generico could actually be making a return. Let's be honest, because imagine how how cool would that be in NXT? Be very cool. I I think he's. I don't know how old is he, but I've been watching. I feel like I've been watching the dude wrestle for twenty years. Oh, he's got to be forty. Easily, he's easily 40 years twenty old. years. Moves, was, but um, you I mean, figure he was like ser- serious original. He's got to come back, back El Generico day. one more time. Serious question for J. Serious question for JP since he's here. Like the free part of the WWE Network, Vince asked this question. Um, what you already missed it, bro? Cass, if, we were talking about the US. I mean, if right you here. think like, do you uh, do you think that uh, it's a smart move to make it free for people right now during the pandemic? Yes, it's advertisement. So you're I not giving them one month though. Is it is it right? still going on? No, no. So they're giving away sections of it. Like you don't get the pay per views, but you might get like um oh, thanks, fucking Tim. Legends House, you know? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna answer the bro cast's question because he no. he or she joined late. So let's I did too. I wanna I because I never I never really gave my opinion. Because Go for I want to give mine officially. Tell us about the US title. So US title uh forever for me will be the spinner belt. I, the spinner I, I, I U.S. title gonna, belt. I you're going to say that. I love the spinner belt. Do you like it? It's all right. I just I think it's a cheap. I love it. I think it's of, of Dove's. It's uh, horrible. It's horrible. The spinner belt is horrible. I wouldn't buy it. I would never buy it. Oh, and, and look, <laughs> Gord, Gord, <laughs> Gord, <laughs> Gord, <laughs> has the, the heavyweight championship with the spinner. I need my other spinner. I'm Dude, gonna get there's, the US title the, there's so, there's so many there's so many memories tied into, um, like the OG John Cena, like Thugonomics John Cena for me. Like Word JP life. shaking his head. Yeah, I loved. That John Cena, like that spinner belt, um, yeah, Cena was, like, was, was a game changer for everyone, dude. Cena was, and it's why he will never go heel. Like, you think of Make a Wish, it's John Cena, like yeah. over 500 Make a Wishes, like, he will More never ever turn heel. It's APC. why he chose yeah. not to marry any female, it's why he chose not to be He's a father, is queen. because. I want to call you yeah, J.P. Whatever. McMahon from now on. Can we change your name to J.P. McMahon? <laughs> he keeps marrying the females. That's the fucking problem. So here's so let's get back to the U.S. belt. I do want to talk about that since we're talking. about I love it. it. I just I, I love I my, my I love this version. I I think that for the pandemic and like I, WWE is doing everything right. They are doing things that um, shoots. Shots at AEW and AEW answers back. So 
all in all, as far as pro wrestling is concerned and Wednesday Night Wars, and if they continue to do between the two companies what they're doing, then we as pro wrestling fans gain everything, and that's what I'm liking about it. For sure, for sure. It was uh, it's the the two belts that stick out for me for U.S. as they go is obviously this the Cena spinner belt was beautifully at the time crafted. It's a little silly looking now when you look back. Oh on yeah, it. But, dumb. but at the but time back it was, then, really it was cool. beautiful. And it was, the, the it one was USL silly, in man. WCW that Lex Luger, I always remember like Lex Luger having it and a couple other people in like the late eighties. That U.S. belt was actually pretty nice. The new U.S. belt that just got replaced was shit, and the one that they have going on now, I actually do like a lot with the ego. I think it's really sharp, and I think I just want to see how it looks on a on a human. I haven't right. watched a whole lot of wrestling. I just went and looked right. up the new U.S. belt, and I fucking love it. I mean, if it's really it's small, it's, though, it's, it's not huge. Good. So they got away from what belts are supposed to be when they did the spinner and stuff. Like it's supposed to be a prize. It's supposed to be an award. Something you're happy to have and wear. And like they kind of got away from that, I thought, and that's back to that. Like it looks like it's a trophy, yeah. and I already have one trophy at my waist. May as well have two. If if we had four hundred and thirty-seven dollars available, do you buy that belt? Was I how right? Is, is that how much that is? Is that yeah, how much it is currently? I was four thirty. Dude, that was I'd ballparking. Have to wait for the that was history of it. Vince, you bought it. You said you have it on. I order, didn't say four thirty-seven exactly, but I said yeah, four hundred bucks next week. You'll have it by next week. So next when, next Thursday at 9 p.m. when everyone joins us again for World Wrestling Radio, Vince is going to have the belt, and we'll see it live and in person. We'll give you a couple minutes. Oh, with he, wait, wait, wait. Let's not. Vince, let's you have you bought that thing? He bought it. Vince is yeah, a true, because the shipping a might collector, not be, dude. You know, it could be. Listen, let's yeah. not say I'm going to get it that day because sometimes when I order from them, I, I thought I would get it, and then they'll, they'll give it to me two weeks later. So let's not because they're behind. They already told me they're behind on orders. Vince, why don't you show us what you got recently, your collections in a, in like a minute? Like go get your the things you just got, the autographs and everything, but show us like in a minute what you've recently acquired so people could see what kind of Oh yeah. Did JP look at this in. thing? Look at this. Got the North American belt signed by Keith Lee, Gargano, Adam Rock Cole, Bay Bay. But Keith and Lee's only a fat guy that can do flips. He oh. marked out when that happened though. <laughs> oh, I love Keith so Lee. When, he Keith Lee signed that belt. <laughs> when he saw Keith Lee had signed that belt, he was so happy. He was like, "Dude, Keith Lee and Adam Cole sign it!" And I was like, "God damn it!" I was that's so awesome. jealous. That's, I was that's really awesome. jealous of him because he, it's one thing to buy the belt; it's another thing to get it signed by everyone. That's a belt down the line because of the history of it right now that's being that's, made. Look he's got. I love that. He got that on Facebook Marketplace, right? <laughs> But listen, this isn't the cheap one. These are the four point two millimeter ones. That's a grom. Those are grommets right there. That's what so, they call that grommet. It's the actual one they wear in the ring because it's it's not stiff. It's the real leather. What did you get? You got that on Facebook Market, right? I check my Facebook Market every day for any bonus. Oh, you never that. know what's going to pop up there. For I paid one fifty for this. Yeah, you'll find shit for under really? two bucks. Oh yeah, almost. Out of my five belts, I think three of them I've gotten for like uh, uh, between one hundred fifty and two hundred bucks. I still want to, if I buy a belt, Josh, what belt will I buy? You, you, here's the challenge. Here's the challenge, and WWE hasn't picked up on this yet. Why are they not mass making Daniel Bryan's belt? Because JP wants one oh, so dude, bad. That, that eco shit sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Wooden one, dude. It's on discount. You can. Put, I'll make you one outside of my house for fucking nine ninety nine. <laughs> dude, it's so Amazing. different. <laughs> Yeah, but, I feel like it's so flimsy and ugly. It's not. Flimsy. I'm not gonna fucking wear it. It's no, not gonna match any of my outfits. You don't wear your belts. What on it. What you call I, I, I sleep with my belts on. What the hell's wrong with you? Here's the other thing they have. They're missing out on. So marketing professionals, listen to me. Why are you not make selling belts like this? But let. Ooh, mm, mm, my yeah. See mine. Let the kids customize yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like, why aren't they selling those belts like that? Better get you know those I mean? autographs in before his eyes. Yeah, they need to be mass transiting all that, mass producing all that crap. Mass, mass transiting all that. You're going to cut some shit <laughs> in. <Not> mass <laughs> transit. Let's not bring him up. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's get back into town. We're at 53 minutes here. We got a couple minutes left. Let's end it with some news. Let me hit my news promo. Hold on. I'm going to do the rest of the show like this. On Green Cole's it. podcast, Keeping It 100, he 
said AEW and CM Punk had some negotiations that took place. And Mr. CM Punk asked for an astronomical, astronomical amount of money. Astronomical. Astronomical amount of money. Um, what do we think about that? And does CM Punk fit in AEW? And what is an astronomical amount of money? A million. I, I think if Khan is really a billionaire, whatever he th- says he is, he would pay the money. But I, I don't think at this time CM Punk can hang with AEW. He, he's, he's been out of the game too long. Yeah, but do you bring him? I bring it. Like, look what they're doing with Taz. He comes in as a mouthpiece. Yeah. You don't pay him a million dollars for that, though. They want to see his ass in the ring. No one wants to see him so, mouthpiece. And- he can go in and take a who ball. Was, who can- was Paul Heyman's boy? You know who how- was Paul Heyman's boy? What punk? What has CM Punk learned everything from? Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman. He is a perfect oh. mouthpiece. Cult of personality. He's a pipe bomb. The arena. Right, How but you don't pay him the place go. As you can, you can in in noted, Punk doesn't move the number because his ass was just doing backstage and that shit was doing 50000 a night and got canceled after six months. So Punk is not... Because it was a fucking talk show. I will show, tell you though. that. But everything's a talk show right now. I mean, it was a sh- it was Punk's return. We'll see. I, I do, so okay. So Punk's not going to AEW because he asked for the astronomical amount. Does Punk show up? Here it is, the million dollar question. What, Does Punk show up in WWE? No, no. Look, he shows well, up in AEW. He he shows up in AEW, beats the shit out of Cody Rhodes till he's bloody and never gets in the ring and is a mouthpiece. And I, I, Paul Heyman. I tell you this right now, real quick. Knowing that Punk is signed to a contract by Fox. That's on a WWF talk show. Mm-hmm. I think if he shows up in AEW, there's a lawsuit. Does he care? No, he doesn't Why? care. Well, I think I actually think he's going to have one more match like everyone else in the WWE, and it's going to be at a WrestleMania, and it's going to be great. It's going to be some other old timer like himself. I will be there. Even I will be Cena, Punk and Cena. Come on, that's that's money right there. And even Punk, he I'll doesn't take want Punk to. He doesn't want it. You take Punk and Roman. He doesn't want it though. I'd rather wow. see Punk than Goldberg. Sorry, ass again. No offense to Goldberg yeah. if you're yeah. listening. Yeah. Don't beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> I think Goldberg getting. All right. Getting- Moving sorry. on. Wrestling Observer says number of positive COVID 19 cases at the Performance Center was closer to 40 as of a week ago. 40 people <laughs> contacted Corona at the Performance Center, yet the show must go on. I'm but sorry, Nico. Does the show go on outside of Florida? Nico, me and you are not going to me and you will me you Chris or Jay are not going to any WWE pay, uh, pay per views or Rawls anytime soon. We're not getting well, it. Florida's getting eleven thousand cases a day, so obviously, I just can't believe that they're still here in Florida, which is the shocker to me. It's not but, like the performance center. It's a I mean, it's not that fancy. They could easily recreate that in any warehouse in Timbuktu, Montana, right next to Yeti, and he'd be really happy to see them pl- fighting. I, listen, I'm going to tell you this right now. As more cases go up, I guarantee you, if McMahon has sense, he would close it down or move it somewhere else. If he has sense. But then what do you do for television? You know what I mean? Like, he has the performance center that they already have. Um, so you may as well use it instead of paying rent somewhere else for a night. Unless they do it up in Connecticut and set up a room in Connecticut. I think at this point it's clear that even though that they're going to get the COVID. It's probably not going to kill them. I think Kayla Braxton's now had it twice and she seems to be fine. She'll be back on there talking by the end of the week. So she's um, on the pump still. The only person that's really should be concerned is Vince himself. And obviously Roman who's nowhere near to be found, but um, I think it's kind of crazy to hear that number and obviously take wrestling observer for what it's worth. Um, you know, this is by no reason factuals, but um to hear that number is scary to me. And that does, in fact, tell me that I'm not going anywhere near the Performance Center or NXT because I don't want Keith Lee's large ass sweating on me. <laughs> Let's be hey, honest. Let me ask you this. Don't you think it'd be cool if they did uh, they did Raw or SmackDown on top of Titan Towers like they did Money in the Bank? Wouldn't that be kind of cool? No. Really? I mean, no. Well, I mean, what? It's a, that was a one-time thing. I can't see them doing that every week. It's just... That's I mean, it's kind of, better that's kind of cool. That's really cool. That but would they be, have there's but, rooms in there to do that. Oh yeah, there's plenty of room. Look at this punk first Thank scene. Thank you for putting that. Out. Yeah, there's I, I a lot of re- opportunity for punk I, to fight an, an established man. Can it? Go ahead. Nico, you tweeted though. something this. 
hold on, dude. Like this, I, I like. Do you guys think t- Nico tweeted out this last week? Uh, John Cena in an NWO shirt, right? Yeah. Like, why can't you have the? Why are you? Why do people focus on the verses and not to not to get not to get? Oh my gosh, not the together. Can I you do. imagine these three right there? Those three names were in NWO shirts. Can, can Punk you imagine Orton that? And Cena? I mean, Punk Horn and Cena would be the yeah. new NWO if you really think about it. That's Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and Hulk Hogan all. I mean, and Cena is Hulk Hogan, right? As and every, yep. does everyone agree? Cena is the Hulk Hogan that goes in and I'm here to save the day, and then drops a leg on fucking Mysterio or something. You know that could be insane. Who's Vince then? But those are the days that won't, don't happen because you happening. can't have a heel Cena. Can't it's have a happening. heel Cena. Just, you got to have a heel Cena at some point before he retires. Ray Mysterio contract expired months ago, according to Wrestling Observer, Mr. Meltzer. Um, he asked for a raise. Vince turned him down, pointed to the COVID releases. Yet here he is competing. Is he doing this for his kid? Is he doing this yeah. for Dominic? Or is no. Ray Mysterio just playing the game? I think if he was doing it for Dominic, he would have signed a contract with him with a little less money. I think he's doing it because he's loyal to the company. He's loyal to the brand. I mean, yeah. Since WCW went out of business, we're in before that he was signed with them. He hasn't gone in. He hasn't done what he did the shot, the little bits in Mexico in between contracts. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, you. Catch just you, brought up something really, um, really important in my opinion because UFC Fight Island, they're doing it right and they're bringing some bangers starting tomorrow. Masvidal and Usman. On, they only um, bought a fucking island. He what went about- on Rada Island and he, he made everyone check in 15 days prior to the yeah. show. They've all been tested. They're all quarantined. I think um, they test like twice banging. a day or something too. So Vince, I mean, Vince has nothing like this going on. Vince has allowed people to show up at the performance center, compete, and then they go to Circle K and they see me getting a Slurpee. You know what I mean? And then they cough on me and now Keith Lee's large they ass saw- got me sick. <laughs> they saw you getting a Slurpee. That means they looked around back at Circle K, huh? Yeah, the slurper. Hey, man, I got to get those tickets. I'm trying to get to back to NXT. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, that's when you give a slurp. You know, I get a slurp. Slurper, the old slurper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're at the the one hour mark. You guys want to give your cheap pops there? Please do. Be my guest. Yeti, JP, anyone? Um, three Irish boys. <laughs> Wrestling autism, uh, autism three sixteen. We actually got some raffles up on eBay right now. We've sold a couple things, so there'll be donations coming in, um, which is really cool. It's like awesome for us to be doing that again. Like I loved it, and I love that it's us because this is what it was before with uh, wrestling autism. Just you means a lot. Is, uh, rich ass up in there with wrestling autism because he's got all these things he could. Probably, you probably got some stuff you could give away. Hundred percent of the charity goes to National Autism Association. What? Dude. So, send me, send me. Send me the link before we uh, we uh we get on here and uh, and I can see if I can send you some stuff. Yeah, we'll talk about right. it later. Yeah. I do I um I do pro wrestling thing. crate and pro wrestling crate. I auction off pretty much everything in there. I keep the t shirts for myself and I auction everything else off. Nice. That's so a little. They do the split. You know, once we start getting a flow of income to National Autism Association, it'll start to gain traction and we'll be off and running. Yeah. Oh yeah, I get this little fucking. They do these little micro brawls. They're about this big stuffed doll of. Uh, I think last month was Brian Myers, and that thing sold for $15. And for those of you that don't know about wrestling autism, it's something that Yeti, myself, and JP created damn near you, 15 years ago. You were um, the originator. That, that was yeah, you that I worked started at, that. Take I worked at TNA many years ago, and I paired up with these two fine gentlemen, and we started our own charity, and we actually raised thousands and thousands of dollars, almost, I think, over almost close to $10,000 throughout events. Yeah. Um, checks are written directly to the National Autism Association, and we're looking to recreate that again. This isn't about making money for us or anything like that. We're looking strictly to get the word out, spread awareness, and get some money in the hands. Because at the end of the day, selling these things, the money, the profits going directly there is really yeah, worth it. And it's every bit like if um, if we pay shipping on something, I'm going to pay the shipping out of pocket, and every bit of the proceeds are going to go to the uh, the charity. That's just how it's going to be. So, and you want to promote awesome. something there, and, make, it, and you get some cool stuff off of us for how far. You know what I mean? You get some cool collectibles. Yeah, I guess that's the 
This is one of the eBay auctions right now. Let me uh, dig through my block. Autographed picture of the North. Nice. Yeah, yeah. so that's on eBay right Can now. I... If you look for wrestling autism. The eBay's eBay. wrestling autism? Is that what's the name of Autism 316 or wrestling autism? Uh, wrestling autism on eBay. We should change our Twitter back to that too. Yes, I agree. So they're saying. To which one? Just wrestling autism. wrestling autism. Vince, cheap pop, go for yeah, it. We need to get that verified. Be easier to find. Uh, make sure you always check out. Um, Vincent Laspada on Instagram. Uh, we post new uh, videos each week. Well, we, we haven't posted in a while, but the last video we posted was me and Matt Riddle talking about some <laughs> crazy ass stuff. But we always post. Uh, was it BTR? BTR behind the ropes. We do another show on the side. You can check it out Wednesdays at ten o'clock. Well, um, I have these. I have these videos. I drop every two weeks. It's uh, BTR presents somebody new. I think this week coming up is going to be che- uh, either Chelsea Green or uh, or Shotzi Blackheart. Denise, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You were a true sure. pleasure in your interactions. Uh, again, over 100 comments made. So thank you so much to everyone listening. There's nothing better than actually having a real live conversation and having interactions with you guys. I love this truly. Uh, we're going to be here every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's an array of characters that are joining us, but these will be the usual characters that join us. So if you like what you heard tonight, uh, please join us every week. And for that, I believe we're going to sign off with a little music and say thank you very much. And we'll talk to everyone next week. Goodbye.